television isn't the only thing that affects the who skill of eating. Anybody that surrounds you affects your eating behavior, how you were raised, but also who you hang out with right now. So if you uh, hang out with people who have dysfunctional eating habits, who aren't competent eaters, it's really quite hard to be a competent eater. We don't have uh, a Professor Henry Higgins around teaching us how to have nice table manners and behave. And this has had a tremendous impact on what socially acceptable behavior is. Now, no matter what humans say in our brain, it's really, really important to us what is socially acceptable. So the people who want to be antisocial, they're actually a member of the antisocial group. So they still want to be part of a group, just they don't want to be part of the mainstream group. They want to be part of the group that is anti the mainstream. So actually, the mainstream dictates what they do because they're thinking about it all the time, so they won't be like that. That's just because they're human. It's very, very difficult to break away from this and it's really a waste of energy and very, very stressful. It's much more useful for you to be aware of it and to uh, put in place things that can help control the effect of that. So awareness actually helps a lot more instead of trying to deny it or avoid it. So uh, the problem is like if you go out and you're uh, eating or you're, you're choosing not to eat, but other people are eating around you. What is your brain saying at that time? Well, the first thing it's saying is this primitive part of your brain is you are low on the totem pole because if you had high status, you would be getting to eat. So your brain doesn't really understand this just jabbering little message of your new brain, the cortex we call this. This is the human brain and it can talk and it's saying, oh no, no, you're gonna look so nice in your dress and everything like that and you've been so good sticking to your diet. It, the, the beast brain and the brat brain, they're going, yeah, 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 yeah. They don't hear this. They don't hear this because what they're saying is, I'm low. They're eating. I'm low. If I were eating, I would be in the same place as they were. I could feel better about myself. That's what society rules are saying is the high status people go first, the low status people go last. So we are going to have a very strong drive to eat when we see other people eating. Of course, the other thing is for survival. If people are eating, that means food's available. And food on the planet Earth wasn't always available. In fact, a lot of the time, it wasn't available. And we already were wired uh, to do certain things. Think of animals. They are out grazing, hunting, your pets at home, you put down a dish. They eat where the food is. We gather up the food and share it in a meal. That is just not done. So you go, oh yeah, lions are sharing the kill. Lions aren't sharing the kill. The high status ones are eating as much as they can fit in their stomach until they literally can't fit anymore and then the other one's coming in. They don't share. They literally just can't keep everyone off. And in fact, some of the animals, I used lions as example, but look at a cheetah. A cheetah runs faster than the other animal and it has to eat quickly because the other animals will steal the food away because cheetahs aren't very strong. They're very fast, but they can't guard what they eat. So in the animal kingdom, you eat where you are and you eat when it's available. In the human kingdom, we share and we have a social context of food. So when we look around at people who are eating and we're not eating, we're low status, that makes us feel bad. And when we feel bad, we want to feel better. And guess what the best way to feel better is? Eat. So there you go, you're hit from both sides. So you feel bad and you know you'll feel better if you eat. You'll feel more high status and you'll also feel less stressed because it gives you stress relieving hormones, pain relieving hormones and feel good hormones. And you feel like you're part of the group. And beyond that, we have um, another part of our brain that is literally eating when we see other people other people eat. And those are called mirror neurons, but it's a little bit complicated, so it's probably best saved for another time. But suffice to say, we have many, many ways that other people's eating behavior impacts on ours.